Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 765. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Excel Magic Trick 761 to 770, click on the link below the video. Hey, in this video here, we have data set, and we want to extract the top three records from the sales column, but we need the date too. Now, um, here's the post, and actually Aladdin posted the solution. I had a, a post there too and I've done other videos on this but what's nice about a lens formula is it takes into consideration if you say top three there's actually 21 and 21 which are first and second but do you select just this one just this one or both and so this formula deals with ties and will extract them both even though we say give me the top three alright so the first thing is we have to count how many are greater than or equal to the the, the largest third value. And we're actually going to use the large function. The large will find this, because large will say, hey, that's the first largest, this is the second largest, and that's the third largest. But if we say greater than or equal to and we count them, it'll include that one and we'll get a count of four. So equals, hey, count if. If only I could type count if. Hey, these are the values we want to count from the range, comma, and the criteria, well, the comparative operator goes in double quotes, greater than or equal to, and double quote, and ampersand to join it with. Well, we need to look up the largest third value. So we highlight that. That's the array, comma, and the K is which one? We want the largest third, the third largest one. Close parentheses, and then close parentheses on the criteria count for count F. There's four. If we were to change this to one, it would then tell us there's three. All right, now we're going to extract the values first because that's easy. We can use the large function in the largest program. If we say, uh, give us the top three, uh, or actually we'll have a number increment, or we'll actually get the top four. The, the large will consider this in the order it, it encounters it as the fourth largest item. But no problem. We also are going to have to turn off our data set when we get past the fourth row, because we only have four items. So we're going to start off with the if, and then we're going to use our formula incrementer rows function. I'm in G2, so I put G dollar sign 2, lock the row in the first cell reference, but not the second cell reference. So as we copy down, this will give us the numbers 1, 2, 3. Then I'm going to say, hey, rows, are you greater than this? And that one I'm going to lock going down. Anytime that's true, which means our formula, our number incrementer is giving us a number greater than 4, comma, what do we want? The value of true is double quotes for blank. Value, val, value if false, well, it's going to be our large function. Here's all these values, comma. The k, well, guess what? As we go down, we're going to use the same number incrementer to give us one, two, three. So as we go down, large will now pull the first, second, third, fourth largest. This will shut it off, so even though it's pulling it past the fourth one, it won't show the result. All right, that's the value if false. Close parenthesis on the if. Enter that and drag it down. So if we change this to one, we can see, sure enough, it's working, Control Z. Now let's extract these values here. Now we're going to have the same situation. We need to turn it off um, in accordance with either this number or this column. Notice these are all numbers, and these are blanks, and blanks are considered text. So we can say if. Now I like to go equals, if that is that cell equal to blank, just like that. But Aladdin did this. He did the end function, and the end function will return the number if it's a number and a zero if it's text. Now, that means you have to know that the if function in the logical test assumes that any number except for zero, including negatives, is a true. Zero is the only number that the logical test um, considers false. Now, we can highlight this and hit the F9. You can see it just returns the number, Control Z. All right, so that's our trigger, a number that's non-zero is true, a zero, or a text which n turns to a zero will then 
turn this off as false. So comma, what do we want if it's true? Well, we want to do our lookup. So I'm going to say index. The array is going to be, oh yeah, we're looking up our dates, F4. Now, row number, it needs a row number. Well, we have our number 21, 22, I'm sorry, 21, 21, and a 20, right? So we need row number 1, whatever that one is, 7, 3, 4. No problem, we can run a true false inside the small function to get the row number. So I'm going to type small, and we're going to build an array of row numbers uh, inside the array with the if. I'm going to say if any when anything in this range right here locked, F4, logical test, when anything there is equal to one cell to my left, not locked, well, what do I want? Comma, the value of true, I, want, I need a row number. Now, this is an array, so it's going to give us all the row numbers, so I'm going to pick whichever one of these columns and lock it. Now, right now, if I did if that, it would give me the row function would actually give me this 2 as this row header. And I don't want that. So watch this. I'm going to subtract from that array of numbers. By the way, F9, that's 2, 3, 4 to 9. Control Z. I'm going to subtract from it row. F4. That will give me 2 minus 2, which is 0. So I don't want that, so I add one back in. Uh, people often wonder, why do you do this complex things for those numbers? Well, because it's robust. Anywhere you copy this, or if you insert rows above, it will retain. That whole thing will give you 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. But guess what? That's the value if true. Value of false, we just can leave it out. We don't need it. Now, if you highlight that if, which says, are any of these values equal to the ones we extracted? If I hit F9, wow, that's going to deliver a 1 and a 7, because the number 21 is in the one first and 7th row. Now, since small is delivering those row numbers, we can't just, when we get to the K here, and I'm going to type a comma, we can't just do our rows like we have I've done in many other videos. We actually have to count if. Count if what? I'm going to do one cell to my left. We're going to have to do an expandable range. The actual range is going to be locked on the first one, not on the second one. And our criteria is also going to be one cell to the left. Now, what does that mean? Right now, it's looking at, in this range right here, 21. And it's counting how many 21s. There's one. But when it gets down to the second 21, this range will have expanded. It'll still be counting 21s. It'll get a count of 2, which is exactly what the K needs, because we need a different 1, 2, 3 for each number it, it counters here. Um, so there's the K, close parentheses. That is our row number, that whole big small. Can you believe it? If I go like this and hit the F9 key, it just gives me 1. Here it will give me 7. Here it will give me 3. Here it will give me 4. Control Z. Close that off. That's the row number. Close parentheses. I see the screen tip. It says value of true. Oh, comma, the value of false is double quotes. Close parentheses. That n is giving a number, which means run the index first. And then if it's a 0, that's going to be the false. All right. Control, Shift, Enter. That's an array. This if function right there, when we give it more than one item, it, you just have to do Control, Shift, Enter. And then double. Oh, I can double click and send it down because there's stuff to the right. Double click and send it down. Now let's go ahead and try it. 100. And now I got a picket fence. And so now it's extracting the top three. If I then give uh, 21 here, it will properly work. All right, uh, extracting top four records, including ties with the formula. See you next trick.